Guys, in case you missed it from my last video, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 now has rollback thanks to the Flycast emulator. And I've been playing it a lot, my friends, and I've really been on that grind playing with the new and improved netcode. But a lot of people have been asking me in the comments if I could talk a little bit about the mechanics of the game, how to get started in the game, what are some things you got to know if you're trying to learn Marvel 2 now fully 20 years after it first came out. Seems like there's not a lot of resources online for how to pick up the game, so I thought I would cover what I would consider five of the most important mechanics in the game that you're really going to need to know if you want to try it out. Whether you're a new player or you're more experienced, hopefully this should help you out. So the first thing we're going to talk about is your buttons, your normals, and I'm going to put the controls up there so you can see exactly what buttons I'm pressing. So the normals in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 work in a pretty unique way that I don't really think it works like this in any other fighting game. So previous Capcom vs. games were six button games, top row, light, medium, heavy punches, bottom row, light, medium, and heavy kicks. But in Marvel 2, they added dedicated assist buttons. Now two out of the six attack buttons are just dedicated to calling assists. So they had to figure out a way to get six normals into four buttons. And the solution that they came up with is that the medium attacks are kind of hidden. The medium attacks will come out if you do two light attacks. So if I press light kick twice, I get light kick, medium kick. If I press light punch, light kick, light punch, I get light punch, light kick, medium punch. The second one that comes out will always be a medium. Now there are some tricks to get around this. For example, Cyclops' standing medium punch is his launcher, which means it's a pretty important move that you want to be able to get without having to do your light punch first. So they gave a lot of characters a solution, which is you can do a direction plus an attack and get sort of these hidden medium attacks out that way. So down forward plus heavy punch is going to be the same as standing medium punch just because they know that you're going to want to be able to get this launcher when you need it and sometimes you don't have the ability to do a light attack first and it's the same for his crouching medium kick uh, you can do with down forward plus heavy kick so a lot of characters are going to have something like this not everybody a lot of medium attacks are going to be inaccessible without doing the light attacks first so just pay attention to that this is also going to affect what's called the magic series if you don't know the magic series is the sequence of normals that are going to combo into each other so the way that works is basically you start at light punch which is the lightest attack and then you work your way from light to heavy so you can do light punch light kick medium punch medium kick and then you can end it with heavy punch and heavy kick so basically you start at light punch and you work your way up and as long as you're going from lighter to heavier it's going to combo and this works especially well in the air as you can see doing magic series in the air is just a nice basic combo that nearly every character can do and get some pretty decent damage. It works on the ground as well, but you can see the opponent gets kind of pushed back, so you might not be able to get the full magic series on the ground, but you can skip around and combo that way. Just do, you know, the normals that you need that will let you combo into what you want to without the opponent getting pushed back. Just note that as long as you're going from lighter to heavier, it should work for most characters. There are exceptions, the big characters, a lot of them cannot do the full magic series. They can only do a couple moves in a row before they have to go into a special move or something like that. So do note that, but for most characters, you are going to be able to do the full five or six button magic series. So really important to know there. All right, next up, we are gonna talk about some movement options. So you may know in Marvel vs. Capcom, you can dash by pressing double tap forward or double tap back, but you can also press both punches and that will make you dash as well. And this is really important because you can dash much faster. This also allows you to air dash. Now, not every character can air dash. It's kind of a rare trait. I think most characters can't air dash. And even fewer characters have what's called the eight-way air dash. So it's called that because literally all eight directions on the stick you can air dash in. Forward, backward, up, down, up, back, up, forward, etc. And so eight-way air dash, it turns out, is extremely powerful because of what's called the tri-jump. Tri-jump means 
jumping up and then air dashing down forward. And you can see it sort of makes a triangle up and then down forward. That's why it's called tri jump. The reason it's so good is because it is a very fast overhead. The opponent has to block a tri jump standing because it is a high attack. It is an overhead. If they block it crouching, you are going to get a hit into a full combo into some nonsense. So the fact that you have this very fast, very hard to react to for some characters like Magneto, it's basically impossible to react to this overhead. This is going to give a lot of mix up options, especially to the top tiers. A lot of the characters with eight way air dash are top tier, but not all. There are some exceptions. And then, of course, there are some characters with more limited air dashes where they can only go forward or maybe they can go forward and back. So you can see it's going to be a lot harder to get fast overheads with this because you're just going to sail over their head. But from the right spacing, you are going to be able to get some pretty decent mix ups going with this. And especially when assists get involved, the way that most fighting games work is you always block the direction of the point character. So if I sandwich them with an assist, they have to block in the direction of Chun-Li. They do not block in the direction of Tronbon. But if I cross up around the same time I call Tronbon, that is going to cross them up. They're going to have to switch the direction they block. And if they don't, they are going to eat huge damage. So this is a great way to create mix-ups as well. Definitely characters with air dashes are more highly valued. You'll see that a lot of the best characters in the game have them. But, you know, there's characters like Cable, Sentinel. They don't have air dashes. Captain Commando, Cyclops. They don't have air dashes either. So there are some top tiers with no air dash. But again, it is a very, very powerful trait, especially for rushdown characters because of this mix-up potential that it gives you. Speaking of dashing, let's talk about the other dashing technique in this game, which is wave dashing. So if you look at my buttons, you can see I simply dash and then I press down plus dash at the same time. And that is going to cancel my dash into crouch, which then gets canceled into another dash. So this is going to be your fastest way to move across the screen for basically all characters. This is really important. If you do it with down back, you can go backwards. Basically, every character in the game can do this. And this is just an ultra important technique, especially if you're playing low tiers or like ratio format where uh, you're not going to have access to the characters with the really fast air dashes and stuff. This is going to be your go to way to move around quickly. So get this down. It's really, really important, especially like call and assist and then wave dash after it and follow it up. Stuff like that is so huge for your movement and for getting in quickly on characters who are trying to keep you out. So next up, we're going to look at a defensive mechanic called rolling. Now watch what happens when I hit the ground here. You can see I roll all the way across the screen. The way you're going to input that, it's a little awkward input, but it's back, down, back, down. So imagine it like a quarter circle down, starting with back, and then you press two punches and that is going to make you roll. I know it's an awkward input, but get accustomed to it because it is going to be very useful. And one of the primary reasons why this is so useful is because of what's called OTG. You can see OTG means on the ground, hitting the opponent when they're grounded from a knockdown. Rolling is going to get you out of a lot of OTGs. As you can see, I was not able to combo Cable there because he rolled out. This is also going to apply to assists as well. There's a lot of assists that put the opponent in a knockdown state and you want to combo off it, but it's just not going to happen. They're going to roll out. So you're going to have to find some kind of roll safe combo, some way to make your combo work that the opponent is not just going to be able to roll out of. Do note that there's one frame right when you hit the ground where you can't roll. So there are some OTG combos that are guaranteed. But a lot of them are fake. A lot of them are rollable. So watch out. Magneto especially is going to be really good at comboing off of OTGs because he's got a full screen dash that's very fast and he's got a one frame crouching light kick. So usually he's going to be able to get up there and get that OTG on that one frame before the roll can happen. But generally, I think you should default to rolling almost all of the time when you get knocked down just to avoid getting OTG'd when you don't have to. And if you want to practice this in training, if you're playing on the emulated Dreamcast version, go into settings here, do dummy, normal, safe falls on. Turning safe falls on is what is going to make the opponent roll when they get knocked down. So then you can practice your OTGs and find out what setups are legit and what setups are able to be rolled out of easily. 
All right, fifth and final tip here. We are going to talk about the different ways to use your supers. So most supers in this game are going to be a special move motion plus two buttons. So like fireball plus two punches does a super with BB Hood. So the first thing we're going to talk about is DHC, which stands for delayed hyper combo, which is a lot more simple than it sounds. The way you do it is you do your first character super, and then at any point during the super, you just do your next character super, and then they'll come in and do it. So you're definitely going to have to practice with your team and find out what DHCs are going to work. You can see sometimes it might look like it should work, but it just doesn't quite because of where the opponent is. So definitely test it, find synergies. That's one of the most fun parts of this game is figuring out what DHCs work, what characters are really good to DHC into. Stuff like that is really fun and really sets the optimized teams apart from the sort of teams that are just thrown together. The next one we're going to talk about is THC, which stands for Team Hyper Combo. And this one is really easy to execute. All you do is press both assists at the same time. And then all three of your characters will come in. It costs three meters. They'll all come in and all do their supers at the same time. So for certain teams, this could be really powerful. So as you can see, BB Hood Juggernaut have a really legendary THC. It's one of the most powerful ones in the game. Probably the best team hyper combo in the game. This can kill a whole character easily and maybe even kill two characters if you catch them calling an assist. So this one's really dangerous, but with most teams, Team Hyper Combo is not going to be that good. Usually you are going to get more damage doing a DHC with most teams, so keep that in mind. And then the final technique we're going to talk about here is the Solo THC. So this is a weird one. This only really applies to some characters. So Rogue only has one super, right? She has this super where she punches you and then she kisses you. Uh, but she has a secret super that can only be done as part of her... THC because it turns out that her normal super doesn't work that well in team hyper combos so they let her do this one by doing a team hyper combo so this is actually really useful because this is going to combo in situations where her other super isn't going to so let me just build up one meter so you can see as long as I just have one meter or if rogue is the only character alive that's the only way that you can get this super to come out without doing a full team hyper combo so it works really well with Rogue and a couple other characters. Sabretooth is also a character that can take advantage of solo THC. I don't know why this works, but for some reason, he's able to spam THCs very quickly when he's solo and really fill up the screen with a ton of bullets. Uh, I guess it's like a bug. I'm not sure. Normally, there's a rule where you're not allowed to have two of Birdie on the screen, the lady firing the gun. But Team Hyper Combo breaks that rule. It does not work if you do his super normally. It only works by doing the Team Hyper Combo. So for whatever reason, the mechanic is a little bit glitchy. A lot of Team Hyper Combos also come out faster than their normal super version. So you can create some punishes that wouldn't normally work. So it's definitely an interesting move that you should experiment with your team. Again, finding synergies is so huge in this game. One of the most important aspects is just finding ways that your characters work together. If you have characters that you want to put on a team together, just go to the lab, test their DHCs, test their THCs, test their assist synergy, and you can find a lot of fun stuff. Even 20 years later, people are still finding new team concepts for the game that no one's ever seen before. So that's one of the best things about it is just there's an infinite amount to explore and have fun with. So hopefully I've helped you guys kind of get started on your path of Marvel 2. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you have questions about. I know everyone in the comments is going to be like, bro, you forgot about this or that. You forgot about push block. You forgot about tiger knee inputs, like whatever. This was not intended to be a comprehensive list. This was just to get you guys started, but if there's enough demand, I'll do more in the future and cover maybe some more obscure mechanics uh, later. So hopefully you enjoyed, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.